everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week's Wargaming Terrain tutorial we're going to be looking at making another battle mat. Now I'm really excited about this one, I was quite nervous going into it. Uh, painting canvases is certainly not something that I'm familiar with, I've never tried anything like this before. Uh, but this one is a much more detailed battle mat, uh, it's really easy to do. I will go through all the steps of this, hopefully they're all clear enough for you. Uh, if you have any questions at all though, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And if you are able, I would love your support on Patreon. Uh, you can subscribe there for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, it really does help me out, guys. I can't stress enough how much that makes a difference to what I'm doing here. So with all that said, uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy this one. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, let's get stuck straight into it. Alright, now this process is very similar to what you would have seen in my original battle map video. I've just marked out on this canvas 3 foot by 3 foot square. I've just used a marker there to make the lines on it. And you just want to make sure when you're taping this down, uh, you want to double tape it. You want your first uh, strip of tape to actually be right on those lines so that your measurements of 3 foot by 3 foot are covered. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, cut this out at the end if you've got that tape right up to those lines. Because uh, we'll be using this masking tape as our guide for cutting out the mat once it's done. Now I'm using this uh, cheap Parfix gap filler. It's acrylic sealant. Uh, this is the cheapest stuff I could find. It's about $3 for three big tubes of this. And for this size mat, I found two full tubes was perfect. Now the sand I'm using is really fine. Uh, there are a couple of other videos on YouTube which are really worthwhile checking out for different battle mats here. I know uh, Berserker Works and uh, Eric's Hobby Workshop have a couple of uh, videos that cover this process similarly as well. Uh, I would suggest checking them out. I'll put links in the description below for their videos. Uh, very valuable to get as much information as you can for making this sort of stuff up. So here I've used about a quarter of a cup of water and about a full cup of sand. It doesn't look like a full cup, obviously that's quite a large plastic cup that I'm using there though. Uh, and you just want to slowly add in little bits at a time. Uh, you want this to be, you don't want it to be too runny, but you definitely want it to be uh, runnier than the original mix of uh, acrylic sealant. So you can sort of see there uh, how that's sort of panning out for me as far as water and sand goes. I'm going to be adding in quite a bit more sand, uh, just I want this to be quite coarse and a, and a fairly rough surface and this sand helps sort of fill it out as well so you don't need quite as much of that acrylic filler to cover the whole thing. So as I said just adding little bits of water and sand at a time just till you get this all sort of mixed up uh, to the right consistency and finally we're going to start adding a little bit of paint in here to get the colour right. I, for this entire mat I've used essentially army painter hobby paints to paint the mat. Uh, this is the only exception which is just here to mix up this acrylic mix. Uh, I just found that I would have been using too much of that hobby paint to get these colours right because I'm going to be adding in uh, small amounts of colour at a time. I'm using yellow ochre and uh, I think it's uh, burnt umber perhaps. Uh, actually yeah burnt umber uh, just to get this colour right. Um, it's, it's really up to you whatever color you're looking for. I wanted something a little bit uh, like yellow sand I guess is what I was going for. Uh, so just keep adding in little bits at a time until you get the color you're looking for. Uh, now the only tool we need at this point is going to be that uh, plastic spreader. Uh, it's about 50 cents at the hardware store and we're just going to start scooping this stuff out of the bucket and spreading it around. Now as for the layer consist uh, thickness here, it, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you don't want this to be too thin though, so you want to make sure that you're covering up all of the canvas. Uh, and you don't really want that canvas texture to be showing through. So it's hard to judge exactly how thick this is uh, at different parts of the mat. Uh, so you, what you want to do is just try and spread that around and cover up everything and then just smooth it out towards the end. So. Here you'll see me just using little bits at a time from that bucket just to start uh, filling it in each side. And you want to push this right up to the edges of that tape. Uh, now this one I'm making here today, I actually made it in my garage on the floor. Uh, so it doesn't leave any mess so long as you're pretty careful about the acrylic mix and you're not sort of spreading it or being too wild with it. And keeping it near the edges of that tape, you shouldn't have it spreading out too far. And as you can see, I use uh, just about every single drop of this stuff that was in the bucket. Uh, so I think I guessed this mix perfectly as far as two tubes to get this coverage. And look, I would say it's maybe an eighth, an eighth of an inch thick. Um, so a few millimeters thick across the whole mat. Uh, what this does is it gives us a nice sort of heavy mat. So once we roll it up and roll it out, it should hold its shape quite well. And it does hold down onto the table as you're using it. It doesn't sort of move around or catch the wind or anything like that. 
so you want to try your best to sort of smooth this out and get any of the lines out that you've created by um, using this spreader. The longer you leave this, the harder it'll probably be, because uh, as this stuff dries out, it will start wanting to grab onto that spreader. So uh, if you find you're having any trouble, a little bit of water uh, added on, you should spray on some water to try and get some uh, a little less tackiness for that stuff. You just generally leave this overnight to dry. I mean, depending on your thickness is what you have to worry about. And like I said, it can be hard to judge. I usually leave mine overnight, depending on the temperature and all that sort of thing will make a difference. Uh, you can probably get away with a few hours, uh, but it's probably best to be safe. And just leave this for as long as you can to ensure that it is dry all the way through. All right, guys, I just want to pause the video real quickly here. And just before we start adding the details onto this battle mat, I just want to um, point out to you, and I can't stress this enough, uh, anyone can really do this. There's not a lot of skill that I have that I'm bringing to the table for painting a canvas. This is the first time I've ever tried it. Um, I have had some practice doing these sort of um, cracks and things on different projects as you would have seen before. Um, but I'll give you some tips very shortly on how, uh, how I get those to look as effective as I possibly can. Uh, there's probably a lot of improvements that can be made on this battle mat because um, like I said I'm still very much a beginner in this process and uh, the out, the effect I've got I'm really happy with. Uh, I'm sure there's artists out there that are probably going to look at what I'm doing and find holes in the process which is fine. I mean uh, like I said I'm just winging it. I'm not really sure how the best process to do all of this is but I found this works really well. So. Uh, stay tuned because like I said I'll have a specific little uh, section of the video coming up shortly where I'll show you how to get those cracks to look really good uh, so you can add them onto terrain or battle mats like this one and, and get the best outcome that you possibly can with it. One last thing I want to point out to you and this is something that I really struggled with in this project was uh, there was a lot of points in this project where I felt like I was wrecking this map. So, um, I think it really doesn't start to feel good until it gets closer to completion. So uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of points in this process where I looked at what I was doing and just thinking it was shit. Um, and I was wrecking this map that I'd just made. So um, I guess my point here is that you should keep going with your process. So even though you might start putting some lines down or throwing some paint onto this map and you might start painting on rocks and things and they might look complete rubbish, um, I, I really encourage you to stick with it and, and keep adding those um, details, keep adding uh, you know different paints as you'll see me do, because uh, a lot of this doesn't really start to look very good until, until towards the end. And that's probably true for a lot of projects that I do. Uh, I get to a point where it's uh, in the middle there and I, I bounce around from feeling good to feeling completely shit about what I'm doing. Um, and, and it's to do with, um, you know, as you're adding individual elements to this battle map, um, those elements look pretty ordinary and and I mean that's really common and uh, don't let that discourage you from keeping going and powering forward with this project because it really is the the sum of all those elements together um, that will make each one look right so keep at it uh, don't get discouraged if you start putting things down on the battle mat and they look rubbish um, I encourage you to keep going with it keep finishing it uh, and you will find that once it's done and once you've got those last little bits of detail going on it all will come together so so with that said, uh, let's get back into this video and I'll show you how I started adding the details to this battle map. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some oak brown army painter paint here and I'm going to start painting in these rocks. Uh, now I did find painting this on with a brush, it's really hard to sort of get fine lines on this. I think it might have something to do with the uh, texture of the battle mat itself because of the sand and stuff. Don't worry too much, uh, you could honestly, as you'll see me later on in the video, I do use a sharpie and a pen to get some finer details onto this mat, so you could probably do it that way. Uh, I found uh, using these paints though, it, it's fine, you don't really need too many fine details when it comes to these rocks. And here I'm just sort of uh, drawing out a bit of a pattern here, and I mean just pick whatever pattern you're kind of happy with and uh, try to break it up, kind of make it a little bit more random as you can. And as you can see, it, it'll just start uh, filling out. Uh, and this is just for the first corner of the battle mat. And I've just gone in to fill in some of those gaps and darken them up. Still using the uh, oak brown paint here. And I've just gone in to sort of darken that stuff up a little bit. Everything will get lighter as we add in uh, more paints and more colors. So I just wanted to make sure I had a nice sort of contrast with this to get started. So the next thing I did was just went in with some uh, skeleton bone 
uh, paint here and I just started lightening up some of these surface areas of the rocks. Uh, here I'm using my airbrush. This is a really cheap airbrush that I'm using here. Uh, this one I got from the auto parts store for around about 40 or 50 dollars. So you can pick those up pretty cheap. You don't need a real high quality airbrush for this sort of work that we're doing today. It works fine. So uh, if you have access to one, uh, it does help out and does give some nice effects. Here I'm using some different greys from Army Painter as well as that oak brown and I'm just trying to get different tones. I'm stippling this on with a large brush just to get some different colours in on the surfaces of these rocks. It doesn't really matter how you go about doing this. I, again, you probably want to get some random colour going in here. You don't want it to be uh, any real patterns coming through at this point. Uh, but what I've used there is that uh, dark stone from Army Painter. I've used ash grey and also that oak brown as well to kind of get that variation. You mix them in a little bit and uh, you'll find that it does give you a, a pretty good outcome. I've worked my way up with those colors to a lighter gray as you can see so I've covered up a lot of the darker areas with the ash gray and again here I'm just going in uh, with the mummy robes to paint uh, to sort of lighten these up a little bit. I don't want pure white on these but uh, these colors that I'm using from Army Painter were fine. Uh, now adding some extra rocks outside uh, onto the desert floor here is pretty simple. Uh, what you want to try and do is uh, you want to try and pick a light source or a direction the light is coming from. It helps kind of give these rocks a bit more of a 3D element if you have one side that's a little bit fatter than the other to sort of indicate a shadow. And again, I've just stippled them a little bit with some grey, gone in with some mummy robes, which is kind of an off-white, and uh, just sort of lighten those stones up a little bit. Here I'm using lava orange just to sort of tone these rocks back and I'm also going onto the desert floor here just sort of branching this orange out. Uh, this gives me the more sort of wasteland look that I'm going for rather than a yellow desert. It's important to also give a little bit of a light spray over your rocks as well because you want those to sort of carry through some of that color. Okay, so as I mentioned at the start of the video, I just want to quickly go over how I make these cracked lines look the way they do. I don't think there's any real sort of difficulty in this, but I think some of you might look at this and feel it's a little intimidating. Uh, so I just want to cover off some of the tricks that I've found work to help make these look a little bit better. As you can see, the basic line that we want to get is something that's really kind of random and jagged. Uh, what you want to try and avoid, as you'll see me doing here, is curvy lines. It just makes it really uh, hard to get a decent look out of it if you're using wavy lines or curvy lines. You really want to try and get a random sort of jagged line like you can see at the bottom of the screen there. So with those ones at the top, I mean, they're not too bad. There might be a use for, for curvy lines at some point in, in your terrain, but uh, the best effect I found was a kind of random jagged line to start with. Any shape is fine, uh, you could do semicircle, jagged lines, but you really want to try and make sure that it's it's really sort of random and jagged as you can see me doing here. Uh, and as you sort of uh, build up on these lines, you want to start with one in a, in a certain spot and then start building off of that line uh, and adding in small bits at a time. Uh, stepping back, having a bit of a look at it and seeing where you might need to add more. So uh, another uh, key thing that I found is uh, when you're uh, creating lines off your jagged lines, so extra cracks, you want to try not to make too many intersections. So as you can see there with that uh, fourth line that I've made just off that first one, our main line, uh, I've made sure to offset it from the, the uh, crack that's uh, heading to the bottom of the screen. Uh, you don't want to have any real four-way intersections because it's probably not too natural to have that. So you can see where I've joined those two there. It's possibly not the best look for that. So you might want to just, uh, you know, uh, instead of having them all join up at the same place, you might just want to redraw it and have it a little bit offset from that. And that'll make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, now, again, there's nothing, nothing really artistic I guess about this. Uh, it takes, it can take a little bit of practice and depending on the surface that you're working on. Uh, I know doing it on foam can be a little bit tricky sometimes uh, but if you can if you can draw a shit line you can make these cracks trust me so uh, you know I guess having no artistic ability is probably helpful in this sense. Uh, so when it comes to making smaller cracked uh, sections as you can see I'm doing there all you want to do is really just sort of join them up at different areas. Uh, you you want to sort of think about where that's happening though. So you'll see in my battle map the the large sort of groups of cracked ground uh, near nearer to the rock surfaces that I've got on the map. Uh, you'll see that very shortly. 
Uh, now when it comes to adding larger, uh, wider cracks onto this uh, sort of pattern, I find the best idea is to sort of go from your fatter section first and work your way out. So you want to make sure that this sort of, you know, thins out all the way along that crack. You don't want to have it fat and then stop, you know, at, at a, you know, all of a sudden it goes thin. Uh, just tend, tends to look a little bit unnatural that way. You want to also try and follow the original line that you put down. So again, trying to avoid too many rounded or curved sections on this. Uh, and if you do have some cracks uh, going off your main crack line there, as you can see, I'm actually uh, taking this out a little bit further and uh, sort of, you know, slowly thinning out that line. And uh, as you can see there, it does give a, a lot more of a sort of a three-dimensional or, or a little bit more variation in this ground uh, texture that we're going for. Uh, and you want to try and make sure that you're not adding too much all at once or you're not overdoing this effect when, you, when you're adding it onto your battle mate. You don't want every crack you've got to be, you know, half an inch thick because then it will start looking a little bit funny. But as you can see, that's sort of coming together now. I'm going to add in a few more little elements up here so you can sort of see uh, all this stuff coming together. If you want to have a large area, you know, that's sort of darkened, uh, you'll see me here. I'm just going to leave one section here that hasn't sort of sunken or, or fallen into that crack so that's still a raised section in the middle here and just filling in the outside of that with black or whatever color you're using uh, will, will give a pretty nice effect as well gives again more variation so uh, keeping everything a little bit random and, and varied uh, will really help this sell this effect at the end of the day I'll quickly just skip through this last little part here for you so you can see all this uh, stuff coming together. But as I mentioned, if you have any questions about this or, you know, if you're working on a project yourself and, you know, you're not sure it's working for you or you think you're doing something wrong, just hit me up with a comment or jump on the Discord server and uh, I'm happy to talk about it and help where I can. But uh, let me just move through this really quickly for you and we'll get stuff back into the project. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the actual mat itself. Uh, now for this process here, rather than trying to paint this sort of stuff on, I want this to be quite fine detail. So uh, initially what I'm doing is just putting some main sort of crack lines onto the battle mat here with a mechanical pencil. So just a lead pencil works fine. And what I'm trying to do is I'm not exactly trying to fill the mat out completely here. I'm just trying to get a sense of what this is going to look like and I'm just adding sort of, you know, uh, these crack lines around, you know, spread out across the mat. I don't want to group this up too much. I don't want to get it too busy all at once. I sort of want to add little bits, see how it feels, see what it looks like. And then we might start joining a little bit of this up a little bit later on uh, in the process. So I will go over these lines with a pen very shortly. So I will show you that process as well. Uh, there's no real advantage, I guess, to using a pencil first other than you kind of get to see it on the mat before you really sort of <laughs> set it in there permanently. So just in case you make mistakes, honestly, I don't know if it's going to be real easy to get rid of this uh, effect, but you could certainly paint over it if you make mistakes or attempt to try and rub it out if you if you feel like you, you know, you've really stuffed it. But uh, I've just gone over with uh, the main sort of uh, blocked cracks that I want on the mat uh, with the pencil. And then I'm going to move straight into using a pen here for the next part. What I've tried to do here is group up these cracked earth elements around these rock outcroppings. Uh, now, there's no real particular reason for that uh, other than I thought it looked pretty cool. That's why I've done it there. Uh, you can sort of get a sense of these cracks on this mat now, sort of pe penciled in there. Uh, but I will be adding quite a bit more detail a little bit later on. Uh, with the pen. Uh, so once I sort of get these lines marked down, I'm actually going to go back in and see where I could add in some more to sort of add to the effect. Uh, here you can see me using a grey sharpie. Uh, this pretty much is comes out black on the mat, so it doesn't really matter what color you use. Here I'm using brown. Again, doesn't really matter. All of these sort of blend in pretty well with the mat and come out mostly black anyway. Uh, I've used these uh, felt tip sharpies here to get the larger cracks sort of pen uh, penned in just so it's a little bit easier and, and quicker to get this on. As I mentioned before, you want to try and thin these out, these cracks out as you go. So if you do make a large crack anywhere on the battle mat, uh, you want to try and make sure you thin that out. 
Now here I've got a really fine point uh, felt tip sharpie here. Uh, this is more of a felt tip pen and this works really well to get the fine lines on there rather than having the larger fatter lines of the uh, felt tip uh, sharpie. So here I'm just going to start getting all of these details in. As I mentioned, I'm going to add in more, uh, more than what you see there. So more than what I've penciled in, there'll be a lot more detail goes on to this one as I go. So as I'm penning this down, I realize, you know, there's a, there's a lot more uh, cracks I want to add in. Try not to overcrowd it. Try not to put too many of uh, any one detail in any one place. You'll see that it really starts to come together quite quickly. Now you might think that this process took me a very long time. Uh, it really didn't, you know. It looks like a lot of work to get this whole map done. Uh, all these cracks on here I think took me maybe an hour or two. It really wasn't a long time and it's really not a hard time either. I mean you just sort of sit there and, and start working on it and it all starts to come together. Uh, I think uh, painting on those rocks and those rock outcroppings uh, probably another hour or two in that process. Uh, but really well worth it. Look, you can honestly, it looks like a really intimidating project, but uh, please don't think so it, it, until you have a go because it really isn't. Here I'm just adding some more of that lava orange from Army Painter just to get, uh, you know, add in a little bit more texture and a little bit more uh, variation in the color of this desert or wasteland. Uh, so here you can see the battle mat in its finished state. Uh, I don't really add any sort of finish on this, so I know I had questions about this in the last battle mat video I did. Uh, I find there's no real need to finish this or add a clear coat or any kind of protective coat to this. These things work great and uh, uh, look, I hope this video has covered all the questions that I received about the last one and hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Uh, I've mentioned a couple of times already, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you want to share any photos of your project or, you know, if you're stuck with your project and you want to, you know, share some photos and, and have a chat about it or see where you might be able to improve it. I'm no expert, but I'm happy to help where I can. So jump on the Discord server and I'm happy to have a chat. Now, uh, lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my Patreon if you can. And thank you all very much. I can't wait to do another one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.